I'm Scott Al Miller, and this is my life living in Leon, Nicaragua. I've had a lot of questions, and this totally makes sense as to why, considering how often I advise people to at least slow down, if not reconsider residency, if it makes sense for them here in Nicaragua at all, because there are other options, not because you should reconsider coming to Nicaragua, but should you do formal residency? Is that something that you even qualify for or make sense for? Does it meet your needs? And because the average person who thinks they need residency actually doesn't need it and probably shouldn't get it. A lot of people wonder why I'm getting it. So that's a great question. So in today's video, we're not going to try to convince you why Nicaragua might be for you. I'm going to explain why the factors have aligned in such a way that residency is something that makes sense here in Nicaragua for me, specifically residency versus other forms of being able to stay long term in Nicaragua. So we're going to get to that right after the bump. The question is not, should you reside in Nicaragua? I think that's an obvious, of course you should. I'm kidding. For a lot of people, it's a great choice, but it's not for everyone. I would never say anything of the sort, but assuming that you have decided that Nicaragua is a place that you should at least try out, if not make a permanent commitment to, whatever permanent means in relationship to living somewhere. Obviously, if you're moving from somewhere else, you are already permanently somewhere else, so permanent doesn't necessarily mean permanent, it just means indefinite. But assuming you're making a choice where you're going to be living in Nicaragua for a very long time, whatever that is, the question comes up, should you use the formal residency process in order to be authorized to stay for that long term? And it's a good question, but one that many people don't know to ask because uh, they often simply jump to the assumption that residency is required. And of course, if you talk to the average lawyer, you, especially when it's advertising residency services or anything like that, and you call them up and you say, can you help me get residency? One, they're never going to volunteer the consultation of should you have residency. It makes no sense. They're, you're past that point. You're past the advisement point. You're already talking to the person who's selling you the legal services for the residency. So they're not going to ask you, do you want residency? They're going to keep, they only make their money if they uh, get selected to process your residency for you. So of course they're going to promote or look the other way as to whether an alternative to formal residency is going to make sense for you. So that's, that's it's never going to be a good process for finding out uh, if it's something that you should have or need or anything of the sort. So many people just assume that they need it and then the one person that they talk to is someone who is paid only if they uh, continue with the residency pass. So of course this builds a expectation, a foundation that residency is just a knee-jerk reaction, but it shouldn't be. It is one of multiple choices of how you can stay long term and only matters under certain circumstances. So for the uh, the majority of people who move to Nicaragua, they either don't qualify for residency, and that's fine, or they qualify, but they fall into a gray area where they also qualify to stay indefinitely without it. And then, of course, there's people who can stay for a certain amount of time and eventually need to move into it. But very few people would ever come up and need residency right upon arrival or shortly thereafter. Normally, there's a bit of time uh, before that would become something uh, that is meaningful. And all the reasons that people generally give for why they want residency are all myths. It's not that there are no reasons to want residency. It's just that when you talk to people and say, well, why is it you're getting residency? They always say something that residency doesn't give them, such as the ability to own property, the ability to stay in the country for a while, the ability to... Uh, you know, um, um, invest in a business or something like that. In fact, for a lot of people, traditionally, they think of uh, businesses as something they have to do to get residency, also a myth. But it's interesting that there's one group that is investing because they think they have to in order to have residency. Very rarely is that true. There's a path to residency that involves investment, but it is very far from being the norm. There are extremely few people who do that, especially now as it's become a bit more difficult. Uh, but then another group of people believe that they want to invest no matter what, and so they're going after residency in order to invest because they think they need to do it that way. So on both sides, there's a myth making you think that the other is a requirement for the opposite thing. It's very strange, but I am going to point out really quickly, if you are looking at going into business and someone has convinced you that you need residency in order to be an investor here, that suggests very strongly from that one thing that you're not familiar enough with the Nicaraguan market and legal system to safely invest because you absolutely don't need that, and even casual investors who've never been to the country are generally aware that they can invest in Nicaragua without having a residency or without even being physically in the country. So to be that far behind the eight ball, 
just caution you that much that investment is a very dangerous thing. Residency is not dangerous. It just takes some time, takes a little bit of money. So let's say it costs you $500 to, to process your residency. Well, the maximum money you could lose through that is $500 if you didn't need to do it, right? You can cap uh, your risk. But if an investment could sprawl into a huge thing, well, I put $50,000 into an investment. I thought I would get these things back. I'm not getting those things. Oh, I've lost my $50,000 investment. Oh, now I have a tax liability of another $50,000. You could end up with a sprawling liability much greater than your investment amount. Whereas a residency, it doesn't happen like that. You can only lose what you put into it. Anyway, that is a quick background as to establish why a discussion comes up as to why we would want residency in the first place. So the person who asked me this question, I want to be real clear. They said, uh, considering you tell everyone not to get residency, why is it that you're getting residency? And that's not correct, right? It's a loaded statement because he was trying to squeeze in this, I'm doing something that I'm telling people not to do. What I'm telling people to do in every video, you can watch one after another after another, this is super consistent, is I'm telling people to wait on your residency until you're absolutely sure Make sure you understand the country and how these things work and what the benefits of residency are. You understand your patterns to know if you qualify for residency, what kind of residency will make sense for you, uh, and if it causes any limitations that may be a problem for you, uh, or uh, if, if the alternatives are just more flexible and make more sense for you. Um, and I'll talk in a moment about the biggest factor of that, because it's not a very big thing, but it's a thing that people overlook and do, just do not understand well. And then, uh, and, and then after all these things, yes, go after residency once you've done your due diligence, but don't rush into it and don't assume that you need it. And the thing that I say constantly is that the majority of expats that are in the country either don't qualify for it or have no need for it. Majority means above 50%. People like to take majority and use that to mean 100%, which is a major logical fallacy. If you think you know, if you someone said, I ate most of the pizza, and you said, you can't have, there's a slice left, you'd think they were crazy, because obviously one slice is less than most of a pizza. Like, that's what that means. If I ate all of the pizza, I'd say I ate the pizza, or I ate all the pizza, not I ate most of it. The reason I'm saying most is because there's some left over, something between 49% and 1% that is still remaining. Now, most doesn't imply anything more than 51% or anything less than one, and you can even get smaller numbers than that, right? It, it just means in that range. It doesn't tell you if it's the vast majority or a bare majority or whatever. And we don't know exactly how much, but what we know is when you survey expats, the number of them that would benefit from or are eligible for residency is relatively small compared to the number who do. And, uh, and, it, and it makes sense when you look at how expats tend to live and you look at what residency does and what it requires, it doesn't add up for the average person in many cases. And Nicaragua offers other tools for a reason, because it may not always make sense for you. They want to be a lot more flexible and powerful from a residency and residential living standpoint than other countries. And they've done so, but so many people come with a mindset from the US or Mexico or whatever, uh, and they simply try to apply that to Nicaragua, forgetting that it's a sovereign nation and its uh, systems and procedures for this are not based on you know what the US or Mexico does. Uh, and so often we bring an expectation and it makes sense, right? You, you work from the context that you know, but it's very common to forget to actually step back and say, is any of this true? Uh, and so often, um, and I'll use, uh, he knows who he is, right? But a lot of people have the same, same mistaken information as they think residency is somehow tied to passport and citizenship. And they either think that they're one and the same because that's, uh, we talk about other countries that way. When people talk about moving to Panama, they're always talking about getting citizenship and, and a passport. And if you're talking about moving to Italy, we're talking about citizenship and a passport in 99% of the cases. But when you're talking about moving to Nicaragua, we're talking about residency, not citizenship, in 99% of cases or higher. And so uh, he was like, wait, I, I don't get a passport with my residency? We're like, absolutely not. Like, resi like residency is a really trivial process that you can do in like two weeks for minimal money, all on your own. You don't need a lawyer. You don't need anything. There's no like, I mean, you need to be approved, but you're being approved by like a department in the country. Like it's a very standard procedure. It's like you know, applying for a permit, just a really big permit, right? It's it's very standard. Uh, it's, it's a little bit bigger than like a uh, liquor license because a liquor license will be issued 
by your departmento. And your residency, yes, it'll be issued in Managua. So it's that one little step more uh, in the permit world, a little bit more formal, a little bit more uh, effort goes into it. But it, we're still talking about what is essentially a permit being issued by a department of the government. Whereas if you're trying to get citizenship, there's a whole bunch of things you have to do. There's no really clear path. There's some things, and I know someone's going to point to a law. I've talked about why that makes no sense, and that shows that people don't understand how the system works, and they haven't actually read what it says, because I've definitely read what it says, and you can't point to that and get the information that you think you're getting. The one port that's really important in there is, no matter how many steps it says, the actual line that matters is you need to have uh, approval at the federal level, right? It could be the president, it could be um, like parliament, the equivalent of uh, what would be parliament or or Congress, that type of organization here, the lawmakers can either vote or a presidential order can, can get you citizenship. As you would expect, same as in the United States, right? If Congress decides you're going to become a citizen, guess what? They're, you're going to get citizenship, right? If the president says you're going to get citizenship, even if it's not a formal thing, one way or another, that's going to happen. Like it's, those are people or groups that are capable of giving you citizenship in 99% of countries out there, and Nicaragua is no different, but it is a requirement here. You can't get to it some other path. You can do all these other steps. The hope is that those things get you on the radar of one of those organizations with the power to grant you citizenship. But if that group either doesn't feel like it, uh, is busy, uh, you don't matter to them, like you never hit their radar, you never get to a point where you can apply to them, you're out of luck, right? So there's there's no solid path to that, and the number of people who do it is essentially none. I have a friend who did, I'll try to get him on the show. And I can tell you, it took him a lifetime, right? And it was more of a, uh, and, and none of it really mattered to him except for, I think, knowing that he got to be a citizen um, and, and getting to, because he's older, when he eventually passes on, he gets to do so knowing that he's a Nicaraguan and, and not uh, from somewhere else. Uh, officially. So that, that can be an emotional thing for people, but that's really more of how it's seen. All right. So why, why after all that residency for us, what does it mean for me and my family? So a few things that make us different. One is we have lived here on and off for nine years and continuously for more than three. By more than three, I mean three in about one day. Uh, <laughs> but we have made a huge commitment. We put in years and years deciding on Nicaragua. We are completely dedicated to living in Nicaragua. This is our plan. This is our, our commitment from a family perspective. It is our commitment from our pets perspective. We have dogs here that we brought from, oh, she's running past me, uh, from the United States. Our home is here. We bought our home here. This is where we have invested. Like we are all in on Nicaragua. We have put in the time, nine years of making sure it's the right place, three years of actually living here full time, and we're investors. So we have a whole bunch of things that make us really solid in the country compared to most people who are like trying it out or think they're going to go for a long time, but they're not really sure. And that doesn't mean that they will leave, but we're much more stable here in the country than a normal expat, even one that's been here for quite some time. And during that time, we're not coming and going. I mean, during the first six years, yes, but during the last three years, only for vacations and necessary logistics trips. We're not, we're not in any way attempting to live outside of the country. So we are the very definition of what would be a target audience for residents, full family, lots of time, put in our due diligence. And of all the types of residency that are open to people who are not married to a Nicaraguan, we qualify for all of them. A lot of people who are looking at residency talk about retirement residency. Well, we qualify for that in both our pensions and our ages. Not my kids, but they would get swept along one way or another. There's also a non-resident, uh, I'm sorry, a non-retirement residency option that is based on foreign income. And that one is essentially the same, and I'm not a lawyer, so I'm not giving you the, the detailed details, but it's really similar to the retirement uh, option, but it's for people who are younger than 45 uh, and or have an income source that is not a pension, but is uh, similar in stability. We qualify for that as well. So we have both of those under our belts that if we wanted to, we could go down those paths super simple and we could have done that a long time ago. But they weren't offering benefits that really mattered to us and we're also investors. We're not investors for the purpose of residency. Let's be clear. We were investors because we wanted to be investors in Nicaragua. That was something we were passionate about. We want to make a difference. We're not here to make money. We'd love to make money, but we're here because we're creating jobs and we want we have businesses that we love doing. We want to be involved in things that drove us to have businesses. Those businesses gave us the option of investment residency. And investment residency uh, on paper is a little bit better than normal residency because you have longer time periods on things, but you also have more work that goes into getting it. 
often I would recommend not going down that path. I don't know that the rewards uh, outweigh the extra effort. If you can qualify for the other types of residency, why not just get those? But for us, because of the things we were doing, because we wanted to, because we wanted to be investors, whether we decided to stay in Nicaragua long term or not, it didn't matter. We already did those things. And those things were enough to qualify for residency via investment. So we're getting that extra benefit, which once it's done, is a lot more visibility, a lot more um, uh, uh, clout in the community. And most importantly for us, it, it means a lot less paperwork once you do it initially uh, to renew from time to time. It is a five-year residency program instead of a one-year. Not that the one year is a problem. You just do your regular paperwork every year and it's not a big deal, but there's a lot less work that goes into it in the long run, but there's more work up front but it didn't matter to us because we were doing it anyway. So we qualify for the best option of residency, which is nice for us. It just, in it's, you know, you're much more likely uh, to be able to go out and talk to uh, uh, the banks and stuff when you have this. Like it just, it looks good with whoever you're interacting with. So there's reasons if you're going to do business in the country that you may want to do this as the path just from soft benefits, right? Very little hard benefits other than the, the five year uh, renewal time period. So because we have all those options and we're getting the best one and because we're committed to being here and because, you know, it all adds up. And the big thing, and I say this a lot, that for the show, not even for us personally, if we were purely personally, I probably wouldn't even want to do this. But because of the show, I want to be able to regularly drive over the CA4 borders with a vehicle. Going to Costa Rica, I'm told we can do with the company owned vehicles that you're allowed to have without residency. So we've had a car for a long time. So we're not doing residency to be able to buy a house, already have one. Not doing residency to be able to get a business, already have one. Not doing residency to get us a car, already have one. All those things. And we can drive over the Costa Rican border. We've not done that, but I know people who have, they say it's not too bad. I need to find out the exact process for that because that'll be interesting. And I need to get it done so we can actually do it and show it because that'd be cool, but not not important for us. What I want to be able to do is drive over the Honduran, Guatemalan, and Salvadoran borders and explore that region and potentially farther, right? I want to be able to drive to Belize because I work there. Uh, I want to be able to go to all those places very fluidly with a car that is licensed and, and owned out of Nicaragua in my name. Um, you cannot do that with the business ones. Or if you can, it's a super complicated process that we don't know how to do. It is uh, by getting the residency you get a few things. One is our ability to bring our stuff in. This only matters for people who have been here long enough that you're actually making a definite commitment to bring in whatever it is you're going to bring in permanently and have it kept in the country. For us, this means shutting down all of our storage units and anything we've ever had in the United States and bringing all the stuff that it's like our memories, our photographs, our, our kids' toys, the, you know, first bib from, you know, whatever, those things that are really sentimental and that we, we can't live without. We're going to ship those down uh, at some point. We have a storage unit that we just need to close out for most people. I, this is one of the huge mistakes we made. I, so I, when I say not to do this, I'm trying to save you from my own mistakes, is we got a storage unit when we came down and it's so packed full, we have no way to empty it. We literally have tried and tried and tried. And for years, we pay every month because we can't figure out how to get everything out of it to, to get rid of it. Even if we're going to bring it here, even if we're going to sell it, doesn't matter. We cannot do it. We don't have the time, the physical strength, the, the time per day, the uh, coordination. It's just not feasible. So by just putting all that in a shipping container and getting it down here and then dealing with it here, while that's crazy. It's a mistake we've already made. So this is a way that will clear that up. Uh, plus there is this, and I do not know how beneficial this is, but you do get to import a car when you become a resident. Um, you only get up to a certain value, but I'm really interested in bringing in a very cheap little car from Costa Rica. Uh, we talked about it on the live stream and that I think will make sense. It's a bunch of dumb. It's all because of the show, not because I'm making good life decisions. So, so just to be clear, so many things are because of this show, not because this is what I would recommend under normal circumstances and or because we made stupid decisions in the past that I'm trying to protect you from. So with residency and a car, I want to bring in a car from Costa Rica that's going to be perfect for this show. I want to get that car completely set up for doing the show because I don't have one that I can use. We have one car that's shared between people. It is always in use. It is in terrible shape. It is useless for a lot of filming because it's in such bad shape. 
and uh, it's it's never available for me. I can't go do long road trips with it. I can't be like, when you guys are like, hey, I really wanna see Hui Galpa, why can't you run out there? I can't take the car and tie it up. It's needed for the business all the time. I can go for 30 minutes here and there, but I can't go do a major thing with it. It's just not available for that. So because of those things, having my own car that's really well suited for the show, that is uh, all set up, that can cross the borders, there's a whole bunch of things that come together because of a car that make residency super important for us. Now. All that said, even if we weren't doing those things, we have been here for so long and we never go anywhere significantly. We live here in Nicaragua. Now we do want to travel more, so this will change in the future. We could have done things to maneuver our, if we didn't want to have residency, we easily could have found ways to not need it. But uh, because we are based here, we really are gonna stay here. This is our home, that is not going to change. Our dogs are here, we're not moving them again. Uh, my kids love living here, they don't wanna move on somewhere else. They do wanna travel a lot, they love seeing the world, but they want this to be their stable home base. Um, for all those reasons, residency makes sense for us, but we've done the due diligence, we've done the years without the residency, we're getting all, we know exactly what we're getting out of it, we know exactly what it takes, uh, and it's not a big deal, at no point do we have to do anything drastic to get it, it's just going through the motions. The hardest part of the whole system is simply going to the United States and getting our uh, paperwork in Apostille, that is a huge pain in the US, but that's just, it is paperwork for anywhere, uh, and if we were moving to Italy, we would need that same paperwork, so it's not like, it's not like a specialty thing. It's just something that most Americans don't do and don't know the process for. So, and you have to do it in person in many cases. So it takes a bit of work. That's the hardest thing. Everything here is, yeah, there's some paperwork you gotta do. Yeah, there's some errands you gotta run, all very minor. And you can easily have a lawyer that steps you through those things. Um, and, and that would be generally my recommendation is have a lawyer, just make sure you're getting a good one that knows what they're doing. Um, because we have a lot of people who've been saying either they got completely screwed by a lawyer, someone ripped them off, and it's all in obvious ways. This is why we do some of the how to find good resources, how to verify things videos. Um, and a lot of other people have been, now I'm gonna do more of a video on this, but there's starting to be people who are wanting to claim that my information is wrong, and they're claiming that they're hiring lawyers to forge their documents for them. Uh, and that's um, one completely obvious. Okay, so obviously you can commit crimes. What I'm saying, here's how you become a resident. Obviously there's some way to commit a crime and make people think you're a resident. So I'm not claiming that that doesn't exist. I'm just not recommending you commit crimes. Like. Uh, imagine if you were in the United States and, and someone said, oh, how do I get $20? And you say, oh, well, you could go work for one hour as a fast food worker in California, and that's $20 an hour. And they'd say, that's great. And then someone said, you know, you're stupid. You could just mug someone for it. Like, obviously, we all know that you can mug someone to get money. That's, you know, we don't need to ask someone how to, how to earn money um, for that. You know how to commit a crime on your own. You don't need me to tell you and I'm certainly not recommending it, uh, but people are starting to come on and call me stupid or, or, or ingenuous, uh, disingenuous, because it's so easy uh, to, there's these, uh, apparently, their claim is that there's lawyers everywhere advertising that they will falsify your paperwork for you, um, and for a small amount of money, forge all your documents and get things nice and easy for you. So yes, there are people on the channel advertising that they can do that, my question for them is, one, what's the point of getting residency if you're constantly living in fear of them discovering that it's fake? What, why not just not have it? Two, how much are you paying to have someone do that versus paying someone to just do the, the actual process unless you actually are hiding something horrible and it's your only option because otherwise you'd be arrested because you're like wanted for something? I don't know. None of this makes any sense at all. Um, and of course, we don't know if any of this is true. I keep asking people who make these claims, okay, we've verified the actual information uh, and the claim is that, uh, oh, it's, it's fake information even though we provide verification. Um, and so they're like, but you can do this thing. I'm like, okay, verify it. And then he said, well, for obvious reasons, I won't verify it. I'm like, yes, because it's either absolutely fake or a crime, one way or another. <laughs> like, seriously, he actually said all this stuff that they did illegally, and then it's like, well, obviously, I'm not going to verify this information. In response to information being claimed, it's not verifiable. It's crazy. So for us, residency absolutely makes sense. But we put in a lot of due diligence and we did exactly the process that I said to do. And we are in no way the majority example of anything. What I do for work, the way that our family moved, our ages, 
our pets, our, our living situations, our investments, uh, the things that we want to do when we have residency that residency gives us the power to do uh, to really, uh, you know, strengthen our position throughout the CA4, not just in Nicaragua. It's one of the great things about Nicaraguan residency, just Nicaragua in general, being a member of a multinational uh, conglomerate border zone is pretty neat that we can do things throughout that region um, with you know, my current uh, visa stamp in my passport is from Guatemala, not from Nicaragua, because that's where I entered the border zone this last time. And uh, like, that's just really interesting and neat. And, and you don't get that in other places. So we are very much the exception, not the rule. We're always a little bit of an outlier and different than most people. We have a unique situation. But like I say, it's only the majority that need to really reconsider residency. For everyone else, they just need to approach it correctly. The minority can still be 49%. It's still a very common scenario. Lots of people are going to want residency or residency is going to be available and make sense for an awful lot of people. But certainly not everyone. It should definitely not be an assumption. It should not be a knee-jerk reaction, and it should not be rushed into, and possibly most importantly, except for the unbelievably rarest of circumstances, and I can't even fathom what scenario this might be, it should not be considered or approached or worried about before you've moved to Nicaragua. You need to be here, spend some time, understand Nicaragua, first of all, and then get to know the residency options and see what makes sense for you. I mean, simply put, if you haven't been in Nicaragua enough time to really understand how things work, then the very idea that you could choose residency doesn't really make very much sense. It's a natural, in order to know enough to make the decision that you needed ahead of time, you would have to be here enough to know to make that decision. So for us, it makes sense. For a lot of you, it will make sense, but for most of you, it probably won't. But as always, be tranquilo, be patient, take your time, do your due diligence, don't rush into things and worry about getting advice from people who are financially incentivized to give you an, a predetermined answer. If you go to an immigration lawyer and ask them to do immigration for you, of course, they only get paid if they say yes. They're never going to try to convince you to do what's best for you. They may try to convince you to do the best type of residency for you because that's within their scope. They're getting paid either way. That's fine. But if you're going to uh, a lawyer or someone who processes residency and asking questions about whether you should get residency, they are their job is to convince you to go with that, right? Just the same as a real estate agent. Should I buy a house? Every real estate agent is going to say yes. Why? Because that's their entire job is to sell houses. If they said no, it would, it would undermine their worldview. So worry about that. Look for real information. And to some point, to some degree, you have to do this yourself. Yes, I'm trying to provide you resources, but I can only give you so much guidance. This is something that, and there's a reason why I say, take your time, be patient, come down and do things because you have to do those things so that you gain the necessary knowledge so that you can make the right decision for you based on actual information. And it's very easy. Once you're here and you observe and you meet people and you're like, wait, you started a business without being a resident? Um, yeah, I know hundreds of people who did that. Oh, well that changes what I've been told. Every person I talked to who went directly to a lawyer got a lot of misinformation and thinks they're doing it for reasons that are not real. You can tell where they must have questioned the process and where the lawyer, or in some cases not even an actual lawyer, decided to push uh, some need on them that didn't exist. And so everyone has a slightly different idea of what they need that residency for. All things that those of us who don't have residency currently already have. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. That comes directly to me, helps make everything that we do here possible. Unlike someone who's paid to convince you to do a certain thing, my money's from donations uh, and from your eyeballs on the show. So by watching and, and supporting, you're helping uh, give us an opportunity to bring this kind of advice to you. If you would be so kind as to share on social media, tell a friend or family member about the show. Tell someone, you know, retirement or residency, living abroad, a, a adventurous lifestyle, foreign investment are all things that are much more within your grasp than you may realize. And here's a show uh, that helps you understand what's out there. We'd be very grateful. As always, I'll see you all tomorrow. And I'm going to try real hard. I'm going to pop up four videos on the screen here. If you could click on one of those, that as well does so much to help promote the show. We've done so much great promotion over the last few weeks. I really appreciate everything that you guys have been doing to get the word out about our little show here.